Hi there, welcome to the Autumn Acorn Knits. This is my Q&A. I hope that you'll grab a drink. I'm drinking just some water today, <clears throat> but I hope you'll grab a drink and join me for some questions and answers. Um, the last time I did a podcast, uh, episode 59, I had asked if you guys would put some questions down in the comments, and for every question asked, you'd be entered to win a pattern, and I'm giving away five free patterns today. So thank you so much for all of you who entered. I got some really good questions, and I'm re really excited to start uh, answering them. Let's get started, shall we? So, the very first question was by Ophelia Bells, and she said, when will the Cozy Cotton Tea be available? Well, I don't know, Ophelia, because the first version of it is complete. I'm not happy with it. The second version of it is complete. I'm happy with it, but it's not what I envisioned. So I'm going to be um, starting the third version, which I think will be the best, I hope. I hope. Um, and I don't want to rush the design at all. I just want to have a really easy, cozy, comfy cotton tea pattern for you to wear all seasons as a perfect layering piece and a staple. So I am working on that. Thank you so much for your question. Okay, the next question is by Carrie Walden. Carrie says, what natural dyeing combo surprised me the most? I remember dyeing one time with cochineal and black walnut. And I had these two dye pots all set, ready to go. They were all ready to dye with. And I took my yarn and I did sort of a variegation with both colors. And oh, they turned out so beautiful. The combination of the tan and the browns and the pinks and the bright pinks and light pinks and all that together was just the perfect combination. I loved that color. Thank you for asking, Carrie. The next question is by Yvonne. She said, how did you get started dyeing and what's your favorite dye? Um, I got started by using food coloring, just something really safe and simple. And once I did that, I was hooked. I absolutely loved it from the beginning. Then I started playing around with different uh, natural dyes, and my very first one was cochineal, and that has continued to become to be my favorite. You can get some beautiful pinks and purples, and um, even some peaches and oranges from cochineal, and it's just it's just lovely. Beth Sheba Mills said, where did you get your beautiful acorn necklace? So I'm not wearing it right now. I wish I was, but I was wearing it in the last episode. And I got that from the Minnesota Acorn Company. They reached out and asked if I would like to have one. And I said, of course, it's a natural acorn on some, I think it's a suede uh, necklace or leather. And it's really well made. I've had it for quite a few years now. And I really enjoy wearing it. The next question is by Leslie of Leslie's Lake Life. She wanted to know, when did you start knitting and crocheting? And there were quite a few of you who had that same question. Um, I started knitting or crocheting first. I had to be around eight years old. And then I started knitting after that. Um, and I never stopped. I have loved both, both fiber arts for a long, long time. <laughs> About 50, 50, 60? How many years? I started when I was 8 and I'm 58, so 50 years I've been doing it, and I love it, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, my mother taught me how to knit, and I used a lot of books to, to learn because we didn't have the internet back then. So, yeah, thank you for asking, Leslie. Um, Laura had also, has also asked, how long have you been knitting, and who taught you? 
And someone else asked, where and when did you learn to knit or crochet? Eric Allerton asked that question. Judy L. says, I'm interested in the way you knit children's socks. Are you going to publish a pattern for the Magic Heel in a child's size? Uh, yes, Judy. Actually, last month I did do just that, and I released a children's version of the Magic Heel sock. Um, and I also released an adult version of the Magic Heel sock in a DK weight, uh, uh, fingering weight with mohair, which is a DK weight. Uh, let's see. Jennifer Red says, how do you decide what natural dyes to use? Do you search for a desired result or the possible dye? So I did have done a ton of research on all of the natural dyes, especially the ones in my area. I find so much conflicting information out there. Um, everything. So I just decided to use intuition and just to keep it simple and just go for it. You really, you can't mess up. I don't think I've ever really had a mistake where I'm like, oh, that's just hideous and you can't use it. Because you can always over dye. So I do a lot of research, but then I take it all with a grain of salt and I experiment, experiment, experiment until I get the results I like. Lorraine Lockwood, how long have you lived in your cabin? How remote are you? Do you have neighbors? Um, Joe and I have lived in this cabin. We bought it finished. We didn't build it about almost eight years ago. Um, we have one neighbor down the road who lives here full time, but almost everyone else, there are a few other cabins, they are only here off and on during these summer months. It's pretty remote, and the rain is picking up. I'm, I apologize if that's loud. Uh, it's been raining all day here. But um, we are about seven or eight minutes from town. The only thing we have in town is a general store, a restaurant or two, and a library, a post office. But we are about a half an hour from, you know, anywhere where you can do shopping in a major town. Amanda Wood says, did you always live in the same part of the country in the beautiful setting you're in, and when did you start knitting? So I think I just answered that question. Um, I've lived here eight years. I lived in Connecticut for 48 years before that, and then in Vermont for a few years in between. Uh, let's see, Candace Kimball, when knitting Charlie socks, do you think knitting the ruffle in a thinner yarn, like a lace yarn, would make it less stiff? Candy, that's an excellent idea, and I think you're right, I should try that. And Kathy asked, of all of the patterns that you've created, which one took the most of your time and attention, and which one took the least or came out the easiest? Um, I would say any of the patterns that I wrote in the beginning of my designing career were the hardest because I don't think I knew everything I needed to know then about what I was doing. The easiest one was the Magic Heel Sock. Honestly, I did not think that that would take off. I thought it was just going to be too simple. And when it became my most popular pattern, I was stunned. I'm still stunned every single day at how well it does. But sometimes I think it's the simplest ideas that are the most successful. So I'm so happy about that. That fun mistake, huh? Uh, Tailspin Farm. Do you still need testers, test knitters for that adorable skirt? Well, I don't. Um, but I think you already are. So I think I've already reached out to tell you that I did at the time, but I don't anymore. Uh, it is in the middle of its test knit, and um, that should be available probably December, maybe January. Speaking of the skirt, Ivana of the Republic of Me says, I've been interested in knitting myself a skirt or pants, but I didn't dare because I thought the fabric might stretch out in the bum area from sitting down. Did you find anything like that when wearing your knitted skirt? Ivana, I've been wearing my skirt um, probably once a week 
since I knit it and so far I have not noticed any pilling in the bum area or any kind of weirdness. Um, but I'm going to keep on wearing it over the months and report back to you because I feel like I would need more experience wearing the skirt before I really know. So stay tuned for that. That was a great question though. Meredith Bridgman says, I noticed you were using DPNs for one of your socks. Is that your preferred method or magic loop or nine inch cirques? Um, my favorite way to knit socks is DPNs and it's because I started out that way. I'm old fashioned um, and I really enjoy them. So yeah, that would be my favorite way. You can knit magic heel socks with any method you like though. She also says, do the magic heels crinkle in the front when worn? Which I thought was such a good question because yes, they do crinkle a little bit in the front when you wear them. However, I have noticed, and please let me know if, if you notice the same, that that will happen with my normal socks as well. My socks with traditional heel flap and gussets, I get a little bit of crinkly right in the front area where my foot bends. It doesn't bother me a bit. But with magic heel socks, you do want to knit them at a tight gauge. It's very important for the fit. Elaine Keisel says, what is your favorite yarn content to knit with? Elaine, it is absolutely, definitely, without a doubt, wool. I especially love Peruvian Highland wools. I like them better than soft merinos, believe it or not. I like anything rustic. I love Nutidin. I love unspun wools like Plotulopi. Um, yeah, I mean, super wash yarn is fine and it's great for socks and children's things and and for, for those who don't really know how to care for knits. But if I have a choice, I'm always going to choose a natural option. Cindy McElroy says, what are your favorite needles and hooks to work with? My very favorite knitting needles are Chowgu Red Lace Interchangeables. Um, I've been using them for several years now. I've tried other sets. They're just not as good. These never break. The joins are very smooth. They're expensive, but they're worth it. Uh, as far as crochet hooks, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't have any really good crochet hooks. I would like to try some of the Furls brand. Those look really nice. Um, but I'm just using some like old metal ones and I need to get some better ones. Um, Aisha Martowidojo says, have you ever ended up frogging a larger project and what are your tips for maximizing the amount of reclaimed yarn? So I have had to frog a lot and I'm getting much, much better at it. Um, I don't like to waste yarn, so if it's, if I'm trying to untangle something or frog something that's two strands, I'll have my husband hold one strand and I'll hold the other and we'll work together. If it's mohair, and something else, I'll stick it in the freezer first before I frog it. That really helps. And if I really don't have the patience, I will give the project to my husband because he will sit there for a long time and work on it, and I would be more tempted to just throw it out. How many states have you lived in? Carrie Sherard asked that. Carrie, I've lived in three states, Connecticut, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Carolyn Zhu, have you needle felted items before or is this a new skill you're working on? Carolyn noticed that I was needle felting in the last episode. I was making some little progress keepers and it's not my first time. I've done it years past. I've made little angels and little figures with bendable parts. Um, I used to needle felt wool dryer balls a lot and I sold those in my shop. Um, it's really fun. I highly recommend it. There was another question about it. Um, Carrie had said, I love your felted mushroom. I've never done that before. Is it complicated? Uh, it is not complicated at all. I would recommend that once you have your materials, you just look at some photographs or some real mushrooms. And um, there's lots of tutorials online. But basically, you're just poking and stabbing this felt piece as many times as you want until it forms into the shape you want it to be. And it's really fun, but be careful because you can poke yourself. That gets better as you've done it longer, but oh boy, I have been ble bleeding before. 
Um, I absolutely love your tank top and cannot wait for the pattern. Are you going to call for testers? Yes, and I'm sorry that I don't, I didn't see your name on this question. Um, but yes, I will, but I'm going to wait until closer to spring for that. Let's see. I feel like we're almost done. Amanda, I did that one. Kathy Shemine says, besides your fiber crafts, do you have other hobbies or interests? And I absolutely do. I consider coffee drinking my number one hobby and interest. I have worked for years at trying to brew the perfect cup of coffee, and I think I have finally done it with by using a mocha pot. Um, but I absolutely love fresh brewed coffee. I absolutely love fresh roasted coffee beans. I love going to a coffee shop. I consider it a hobby. Um, I also in the past have done basket weaving. I really enjoy basket weaving. I've done pine needle basket weaving, um, needle felting. I have done rug hooking. I'm working on a piece right now, in fact. Um, I have a lot of hobbies. I love to read, um, I love to watch podcasts, I love to be inspired by other podcasters and content creators. Um, yeah, I love taking walks in the woods. I love nature. I love a lot. So that was everything. I've answered almost every question, I believe. And thank you so, so much for asking all these questions. This was fantastic. Um, I took a random number generator and it spit out five different names. So I'm going to tell you who the five winners of the five patterns are. Ophelia Bells, Carrie Walden, Yvonne, Bathsheba, Mills, and Leslie from Leslie's Lake Life. Please reach out to me and let me know which pattern you would like me to gift you. You can choose from any of the patterns in my shop. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope that you are having a really, really cozy fall. And I hope that you're well. I will talk to you soon. Bye now.